Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. June 15th, 2023, we're here for our IRCC update. Double checking if everyone can see us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Not sure if everyone can see it. Give me a thumbs up or a confirmation on YouTube if you do see us live. Would appreciate some feedback here. Um, not sure why we're having these issues with YouTube these days. Hmm. Not sure why we're having this issue with YouTube. Uh, we're just gonna wait for a confirmation. Somebody can tell us that they can see us on YouTube and we can go ahead. Otherwise, we have to go. Ah, okay, I see something. There's like a, yes, voice is slow. Okay, no worries. We're here, we're live. We're gonna do an IRCC update, folks. The raw truth and nothing but the truth. That's what we're doing with this live stream today we're talking about express entry um, continuing for all draws and the new occu occupation specific draws we're talking about ukrainian special measures being extended the quebec investor program the immigrant investor program reopening end of this year and the new programs that are in works by the ircc and as well some suv updates plus a lot more in today's live session streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And again, I apologize for technica technical issues and sometimes delays on, um, on our channels. No problem. Um, here we go. Quick introduction if you don't know me. My name is Reza and I work with the Ingway Immigration Team, helping applicants move across borders, whether it's for your business, yourself, your kids, your entire family or all of the above we make it happen um, we are working to share our hands-on immigration knowledge with our worldwide audience i don't do this full-time on youtube but i work full-time on actual immigration cases with our office and our license team here in canada helping applicants move we're in touch with ircc on a daily basis representing our clients both inside and outside of canada and of course, you can get a free email assessment for eligible applicants by filling out the form below. We've got a lot to cover today for the latest Canadian Immigration IRCC updates. Maybe too little time to cover everything, so I do apologize if I don't cover a lot of the PNP uh, draws today because there's a lot of federal information that we need to go. But of course, we're going to give it our best shot during this raw live stream that we have on today many immigration practitioners recently attended either the winnipeg seminar on citizenship and immigration and or the ottawa ev event where ircc did attend and provide insights and information on specific subjects from express entry lmias processing times backlogs and new pathways and programs revisions the information i'm providing you today is from these events now, a lot of information can be found online. Remember, I'm no wizard of Oz. I just know where to look and find those interesting pieces of information that um, people are looking for. Here are some quickie updates to go through. IRCC is, as you know, is rolling out the PTE, English exam system for immigration purposes by the end of this year. No clear date has been announced, but I've sp spoken with the PTE representatives and they're waiting too, and they're in the dark, but they know it's going to happen this year. And of course, IRCC said it's going to happen this year. As of end of March 2023, non-residents with valid work permits at, with at least six months validity on their work permit are allowed to purchase residential real estate anywhere in Canada without being banned. However, remember that there are still non-resident taxes in effect in Toronto and Vancouver, but you can be exempt from these or receive a refund if you're an international student or PNP nominee. As well, there's full exemptions in place if you're purchasing commercial, industrial, agricultural land, bare land, or multi-unit residential properties with four or more units. Each province in the region has its own restrictions. So make sure you check before you invest or decide to invest. Of course, we have an in-house team that will help with that if you are interested. 
IRCC announced faster study permit and work permits and visitor visa processing for spousal and common law applications. A new dedicated processing tool for spousal and common law TRV applications and extensions for open work permit holders under the family class. They are seeking to process TRVs under the family class uh, much faster within 38 days. At least that's what they claim. We really need to see what's going to happen in terms of this claim of trying to process them within 30 days. Only family class applicants from inside of Canada may be eligible for open work permits, same as before. Now dependents such as children under the age of 22 can also opt for this open work permit if they meet the eligibility cr criteria under the family class and have submitted a PR application from inside Canada with valid status. Great news from Ontario, the prof Professional Engineers Ontario body has announced that Canadian work experience is not mandatory anymore to become a uh, professional or designated professional engineer in this province. Here's some of the latest IRCC uh, stats. Uh, approximately 1.7 million processed applications of all categories processed by IRCC so far in 2023. A total of 5.2 million decisions on all types of ap immigration applications were issued in 2022 by IRCC. That's a lot. IRCC total backlog as of today is 2 million 6,000, of which 809,000 are way overdue for processing, and God knows how many months or years they've been waiting. Funny fact, there's still TR to PR pathway applications inside Canada who have not been processed yet for PR even after three years, specifically the essential worker streams. Express entry draws will continue in 2023 and beyond. The new occupation specific draws, which are called the category based selection draws, are occupation specific, as I said. It's actually a pilot, but they forgot to mention that to the public. They will be testing it out starting this summer and it will continue, and then they, they will decide whether to expand it narrow it down or tweak it or make changes to it. This new occupation-specific draw and express entry will check your work experience in the past three years and take six months continuous eligible work experience in one of those selected knock codes or those targeted knock codes to invite you. So it doesn't mean you have to be working in that occupation now or before. It's six months continuous within the last three year window of your documented work experience in your valid express entry profile. Okay, so it's not the intended NAR code or the main one, just as long as it matches the occupations they're selecting and you've got six months continuous work experience in the last three years. Now, this question comes out about this new CBS express entry draw, so the category based selections. How many applicants in the express entry pool will be invited under this specific draw? How many occupations are going to be in each draw? How will the number of invitations be split between these occupations? The funny thing is the IRCC will test and simulate these draws behind the scenes first and check how many eligible applicants in the express entry pool will be invited for these occupation-specific draws and then calculate everything and then finalize the draws afterwards. So they have no clue either at this point, but they're going to do a simulation behind the scenes see what comes out, and then finalize the draw, at least the first draw. So that being said, it's still in pilot mode. They're going to expand the program, make changes to it after probably the first three, four months of making these draws. The next question everyone is asking about is the express entry draws, whether the federal skill worker draws, the federal skill trade draws, the provincial nominee draws, the Canadian experience class, will continue alongside the occupation-specific draws? That's the question. Will there be less draws in the general draws compared to these new occupation-specific draws? The answer provided by RCC is that the new occupation-specific draws will not affect the general draws, and those other draws will still continue as planned. So there's nothing for applicants to be worried about now for the rest of 2023 if they're hoping to be invited for PR through express entry, either CEC, job offer points, provincial nominee, federal skill worker, whatnot. The occupation categories for this CBS category-based draws in express entry will be French language proficiency candidates with the highest scores, 
healthcare occupations with the highest CR scores, not codes starting in 3-1, 4-1, 3-3, and 3-2, but not all of them. Science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM-based occupations with the highest CR scores in not codes starting with 21, 2 such as all types of engineers, cybersecurity specialists, land surveyors, architects, software designers, developers, web designers, and developers, just to name a few examples. Trade occupations with the high CR scores in NACO starting in 723, 724, 721, 722, and 732, although not all of the subcategories under these NACOs will be selected. Transport occupations with the high CR scores in NACO starting in 726, 724, and also set the NACO 932200 as well as 70020 will be invited or targeted at least. Agriculture and agri-food occupations eligible for express entry with the higher scores in NACOs 82031, 82030 in horticulture and landscaping occupations and farm supervisors and contractors uh, and 63201 as butchers because it's agri-food um, uh, will also be targeted. And remember, these NAC codes or categories will be changed okay across the next several months so they will be tested out and there will be new knock codes added certain knock codes removed if you're not in any of these knock codes don't worry the general draws under the federal school worker canadian experience class and provincial nominee and federal skill trades will continue and if federal skill trades you're worried well in ontario you know that a lot of the pnp provincial nominee uh, draws are based on the federal skilled trades these days as well, even if express entry doesn't have federal skilled trades specific draws. Other information to continue. IRCC is conducting massive internal immigration review and research ongoing for new revamps and new programs, and they call it immigration for 2025 and beyond shaping the future of immigration programs for the country so that's a massive internal project that they're working on and of course some more stats for you approximately 140,000 temporary foreign workers entered Canada last year 204,700 are employed right now inside Canada as of 2022 statistics this is less than 1% of the total employment market or the labor market in Canada. So the labor force market is about 20.8 million working and only 204,700 temporary foreign workers as of last year are working inside Canada. So if anyone tells you foreigners or immigrants are taking our jobs, that is absolutely not true. In terms of all LMIs issued in 2023, 52% are agriculture, 14% are in total of all the LMIs are in low wage, such as food processing, hospitality, service sectors. 13% are on high wage, 4% are under the global talent stream, 14% are PR supported LMIs. And yes, there is such a thing as a PR supported LMI. Refer to our previous articles on our website if you need explanation on that. The average median wage has increased across Canada and published by Service Canada Wage Bank, which was approximately 3.2% increase as of May 31st, 2023. A 90-day transition period has been allowed for employers who have ongoing LMIs or recruitment efforts. Officially, Service Canada reports that one out of five temporary workers convert to PR after their arrive to Canada, you know, meet the eligibility criteria under certain, not consider agricultural occupations um, in this statistic. If they take that out, then it's more than 50% of temporary farm workers convert to PR after they've met eligibility criteria inside Canada, if you move out the seasonal and agricultural type workers from those st stats. Service Canada is not planning to add any new occupations expected in 2023 under the global talent stream it is what it is until the end of the year a new international st student stream for pr path is being trying to pass in parliament this year since there's 700,000 international students inside canada as of today and not enough economic pathway vacancies for their pr route 
There are approximately 200,000 spots per year for economic permit immigration applications for Canada, which means there's a huge gap between the number of international students who are graduating to become eligible and the number of spots ready for them to convert to PR. So IRCC is working to fill this gap and keep these graduates inside the country to offer them a clear pathway besides Express Entry and PNP for PR. Uh, and this is obviously beyond their efforts of extending postgraduate work permit holders who are expiring this year as well. But they are working on an international student graduate PR path on the federal stage. We're not going to call it TR to PR pathway because that's not what it is, but they are working on it. And again, who knows when they'll announce it, but they know there's a huge gap and they're working on filling it. Caregiver pilot processing times will be reduced significantly. Fast tracking work permits. This is in the pipelines and it will be announced in the next six months. The Quebec Invest Immigrant Investor Program, also known as the QIIP, is reopening potentially November 2023 this year. French is required to be learned after you arrive to uh, Quebec with a work permit. Physical presence of at least six months required. You're looking at a million dollars, five years refundable plus a 200,000 non-refundable. There's no quota. You do need management experience of two years. And of course, you can finance the one million uh, by paying $300,000 approximately plus the $200,000 donation. And of course, remember, this is still not finalized. It will be finalized this summer. They're going to fast track this program, but there are a lot new of criteria and eligibility. IRCC is changing the PGWP eligibility criteria in the near future for international students. They are planning to make it more flexible and accommodating. This is in the works and expect something maybe in the next six to nine months, not immediately, but it is in the pipeline. Last but not least, a startup visa. Updated work permit instructions by RCC to get everyone aligned. This has been announced in May, as a lot of you know. There's nothing new to it. The only key criteria is that you put everything in place in the work permit application to show that you're eligible under the startup visa PR program. So letter of support, which has to be valid, essential worker, your IELTS, minimum settlement funds, and separate investment funds, and proof that every single member in your startup group, whether essential or non-essential, has applied for their PR. Whether it's just a screenshot or whatnot, you need that proof. We're gonna have a dedicated video or live on that in the coming 14 days. But all it does is create clarity for startup visa work permit applicants. It is not changing the program. There is no new policy. There's no new change in the startup visa program, especially for work permit. It is giving clarity and a roadmap for officers who are making decisions and applicants who are planning to apply for work permit to enter Canada under the startup visa business program. SUV processing and approval rates are scattered. We're seeing all of 2020 inventories of SUV PR pro applications processed and second half of this year to clear through a lot of the 2021s inventories of PR applicants under the start of visa. More and more PR cases are going to federal court for judicial review after they're being refused. 4,000 cases of SUV are in the backlog. Fewer than 500 PRs were processed in 2022 under the start of visa program. It is very scattered and we're still validating the fact that it is very random as well. If you're from one of those high volume nationalities, Iran, Vietnam, Hong Kong, China, India, Pakistan, and Africa. If you're from Middle East, Africa, Southeast Asia, we have a hypothesis that it's going to be very random in terms of your approval or refusal, unfortunately, because that's what we're seeing right now. And we'll have more information about that as the summer goes through and we're seeing a lot of these cases go on. Um, there's obviously a lot of news out there about the scams that happened in the Indian market with fraudulent um, letters of admissions that a lot of students came in. Obviously, IRCC is trying to rectify and allow those students to stay in and, and not to punish them. Um, it's all across the news, so I'm not going to really get into that, but obviously that's a major red flag to be careful when you're dealing with 
agencies, agents, RCICs, non-RCICs, ghost consultants, whoever they are, wherever they are, make sure you do your due diligence. And of course, we're gonna get to the questions and comments and quick closing. If you're thinking about immigrating, whether primarily, temporarily, we are, you are at the right place. You, we can guarantee you only one point. You'll know what to expect, all the costs and the entire process laid out for you. Our legal agreements are based on milestones, based on your application progression. We have dedicated client trust accounts. We have a $1 million liability insurance. Our team speaks over eight, nine languages and we help applicants from 49 different countries. Get a v, uh, free email assessment for eligible applicants only by filling out the form below this video. Uh, and of course, you can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me or any of my licensed immigration team members by clicking on the consultation link below this video. And of course, we're here every Thursday answering your questions live on YouTube, um, 11 a.m. North America Eastern Standard Time. So I'm going to switch over to YouTube, look at the comments, answer the questions as the best of our ability. And if you're on Instagram or Facebook, I will not be able to see your comments or questions during the live. I do apologize. So let's jump in here. Lots happening. Hima says, Salam, Agareza, Chitari. <laughs> hi, Hima. Almon says, Hi. Hi, back. Safa, hi, everyone. Nasreen. Rosita says, Hi, Reza Jun. Good luck. Thank you, Rosita. Safa says, There technical issue. Yes, yeah, Safa, every, every week I have technical issues. Ejiro Igbi. Nice to see. Bupinder, yes, voice is low. Yeah, everyone was confirming that my YouTube is okay. Thank you, Ejiro. Um, Salio, hi everyone, Bupinder, Angel, confirming that at the beginning of my YouTube that you can see me great. Um, Sabri7, yeah, confirming, thank you, Salio, Diallo, thank you, Hima as well, Adi's Cafe, hi, hi Adi's Cafe, Abdul Rahman Salad, how many days it is taking ESDC to process LMI is this day? It's anywhere from 25 to 35 days, Abdul, and this is uh, in high weight. Same thing. It's quite fast, so within 30 days average, you do see Service Canada processing LMI applications, issuing decisions. Ravneet Kaur, hi Reza, are there any changes to the SUBC work permit recently? As I said, Ravneet, there's no significant changes, just clarity on instructions on the how to apply for a startup visa work permit. Ravneet, has RCC made it harder to get work permit under SU? No, they haven't made it harder. It's the same as before. Ravneet, hi Reza, please answer. Has RCC made it harder? Yep, replied. Safa, how are you doing? Great, thank you Safa, appreciate it. Abdul Rahman says, can you tell about recent actual processing times for LMI applications? Yeah, we've seen 28 to 35 days for high wage. Hima says, hi Reza, we lodged a PNPPR in October 2022, so a provincial nominee program, permanent application, permanent residence application. Then procedural fairness in uh, January 2023. In April that they're re reviewing our additional documents. Shall we wait or can we go for GCSMS? Thank you so much. I would suggest that you wait because the GCMS may not have been updated or by the time you get a decision, you'll get a GCSMS, uh, the Global Case Management System notes later. Adel Ramos says, Hi Reza, I'm graduating today at Centennial College. Congrats. Thanks for your useful suggestion and advice when I was just starting in Canada two years ago. <laughs> okay, Adel. I don't remember, but I hope it was useful. Uh, Safa Saleh, do you think that the rejection of work permits will impact on the PR under SUV? Do you have an example of a work permit refusal then the PR has been obtained? Um, no examples yet, Safa. We do have work permit refusals and approvals but no specific case because the work permits were being approved at a 98% approval rate years ago. Those PRs are all fine if they had a work permit or not, but a PR being obtained with the work permit refusal and recently we have not seen any real life cases where we've seen the decision, final decision yet. Ravneet Kao, hi Reza, please answer. Has ISIS made it harder? No, I already replied, all clear. Uh, no, of course, previously, two years ago, Ravneet, it was easy, 95, 98% approval. Now, it's, it's a hit and miss. Depending on your nationality, your travel history, and your startup, 
that's how they'll process it and decide. So it's not going to be 90% approval. It may be 80, 75. If you're from a visa exam country, I would say you're in 90s. If you're from visa required countries and high volume countries, you could be looking at 70%, maybe 65. Those stats are not clear yet. Um, Ravneet Kaur says, hi Reza, please answer. Has Yeah, we've answered that. Uh, Pardeep Rati, boss, I have a good startup idea, but don't have any, any, don't know how any Canadian angels or VC investors, so how to proceed, what's a startup visa fee, and is it refundable or not? Uh, Pardeep, you can contact our office, mention that you're looking for uh, startup visa services, we can quote you, and you will know what to do, and of course, our business subsidiaries can assist with admission to the incubators or the designated organizations to be endorse your startup for the startup visa. Again, you got to get into it with full clarity, you know, understanding the risks involved in the program. Ravneet Kao, hi, Pardeep, connect with me. <laughs> uh, okay, no problem. People are doing deals together. <laughs> um, I don't know how to connect with you. Please connect with me. Okay, you guys are trying to do, do a deal live on YouTube. That's fine. And of course, um, Angel, how do you show proof of significant benefit to Canada for startup visa work permit? That's a huge question, Angel. You have to show significant benefit. It can be social, cultural, or economic. Economic means hiring Canadians or investing or doing something in underserviced areas. So huge question. I may not be able to answer that because it depends on your startup and what you're planning to do. The investment, the hiring, there's a lot of factors playing and that you can create significant benefit. Ravneet, hi Angel, just upload your business plan. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they actually go through the business plan, Ravneet. Uh, that's not a significant benefit. Abdul Rahman, so a lot. I love how everyone's giving each other advice here. It's good, I like the community feel, but uh, I take everything with a grain of salt. Abdul Rahman, thank you very much. Fabian Otero, any news about letting international students work more than 20 hours a week in December? Any update? They're working on it, Fabian. There's no um, clear decision, but they are looking to create a lot of new programs, flexibility, eligibility for international students who've graduated to convert to PR, PGWP flexibility, and potentially uh, extending but there's no uh, message yet from them that whether they'll extend it beyond December but things are looking bright for international students because they haven't done anything this year besides extend PGWPs. Abdul Rahman Salah thank you so much no problem. Hima merci Agareza for your response will there be a possibility of refusal after this long we're nearly eight months waiting for our PR. Hima under, was it under the PNP that you were mentioning? Um, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, I don't know the specifics of your case, Hima. Um, obviously, they are making a decision on your case. It could go either way. I don't have the specifics. They've sent you a procedural fairness letter. You've responded. They're looking at it, so it could go either way. I don't have the... I can't really uh, give you a prediction on that. Safa, can we extend LOS after expiration? As you know, it's only six months. Yes, you can extend. It depends on your designated organization. Are they cooperative? Are they helpful? Will they assist? Most of the ones we work with have assisted and renewed and issued letters of support. And some of them have even changed around essential, non-essential members. Some designated organizer will take funds or money from you to do that. Some won't. And we know the ones that don't, just so you know. Ravneet Kaur, hi Reza, please answer. Has Iris is made a hard? Yeah, we already answered that. Ravneet, yes, it's not as easy as two years ago, but it's not also 90% approval or 90% refusal. It depends on your nationality. So if you're applying from India, it could be 70%, right? But we don't know the stats because this year everything has changed. Amir Shikari, hi, thanks for the live. Will you explain graduate direct stream? Amir, the graduate direct stream is Ontario, Newfoundland, and BC. In BC, it's not points-based driven. You graduate from eligible programs and universities, and you meet the PNP eligibility, and you go through no job offer. 
Ontario master's or PhD is a points-based system. No job offer required, but you need to be selected from the draw. Newfoundland, similar. Sorry, I couldn't get too much into the detail, but in Ontario, you don't need to go to a specific program like BC, just a public university listed on the website and most public universities are approved. Still lost, still lost. Oh, that's cool, that's a cool name. I applied on a C11 work permit. It's been 10 months. There's no reply from RCC. I'm still waiting for approval. Should I go for withdrawal or how long can I wait? We, do, we don't do C10s anymore, still lost. They stopped doing that for long-term business who want to be here more on a long-term. C11 is more for seasonal short-term gigs or self-employed artists, you know, athletes, authors, things like that. Um, there's something wrong with their application, okay? I would say withdraw and reapply. Who, it's just a matter of $155 plus $230. You've already done your biometric. Um, or just use the same to uh, uh, 155, but you have to redo the 235. Uh, sorry, I'm getting confused now. But yeah, 10 months is way out of whack. Okay, you need to withdraw, reapply, do something. I don't typically do C11s now. If you're an entrepreneur setting up a long term business, I do C10s. Jamil Brenda, how much proof of funds is required for self employed program? Ah, Jamil. Self-employed, there's no minimum requirement, but they want to see that you're duplicating your success. So it depends if you have a guitar shop or if you're a coach, if you're a pianist, if you're a musician or an actor or producer, how much does it require to run your business or start your business in Canada? Is it a thousand, 10,000, a hundred thousand? If you're doing a studio, if you're doing a school, if you're going to be running a workshop, I don't know, but Typically, it depends on your success that you've had before. Can you use that revenue or those funds to duplicate your success in Canada? It's a very vague program, so you need to have full clarity. And again, it depends on your occupation. If you, don't, if you have $10,000, it'll be tough. But again, it depends where in Canada. Are you coming to Toronto or Vancouver or Calgary? Well, $10,000 isn't even going to buy you a cup of coffee. Just joking. But if you go to a rural region and you've got 25,000, that's the equivalent of like having 100,000 in the big cities. I hope that gives you clarity. Nozi Okolo, no, Gozi Okolo. Based on the category based express entry, do you think age will favor less than 30 years, just like the federal skilled workers express? It's the same points based system, Gozi. Uh, so that means they will not actually, it's an occupation specific draw with the required minimum score so of course people with less score in the right occupation will have a higher chance but again depends how low they go okay so it's not a different points based system it's not a different scoring matrix same scoring matrix except they're going to drop the score and do those occupation specific draws and of course if you're 21 or 28 you're going to have a better chance if you have good education, work experience, and those specific uh, not codes than somebody who's 50 years old. But it doesn't mean that it's 100% no for you. So again, keep your, app, um, uh, keep your express entry profile valid. This is what I tell everyone. Express entry is like almost like a lottery ticket. How will you win if you don't have a lottery ticket? How do you get a lottery ticket? Well, you have an app valid express entry profile and express entry, no matter how many points you have. As long as you're eligible, get in there fast. Ravni, last question, Reza. No problem, Ravni. You can ask me as many questions as you like. How much a team should provide as proof of investment funds, new requirement, work permit? There's no document, but again, it depends on what you're planning to do. So you're saying, I'm going to create significant benefit in Canada, hire two people, set up an office, develop my MVP, or do a pilot plot. Well, two and two together, you're looking at sixty to $100,000, right? Hiring two people, are these going to be like fresh graduate secretary or developers? Then you're talking about 150000 right? So it depends on your business plan, your roadmap for significant benefit, and those two have to make sense like any other business immigration case. 
right folks? So if you put a business plan, hey, I'm gonna start a restaurant and you say I've got $50,000 and I wanna start in Vancouver or Montreal, well, good luck, that's not gonna get you a restaurant. Same with investment funds for a startup visa. They intentionally did not post these things because you know what they like to do? They like to have discretionary power to refuse or approve. But you have to make it logical. Hey, I'm planning to do all this in Canada. This is how much I need. This is how much it's gonna cost me. That's exactly what you need to do. You have to define to the IRS offer. This is how much it costs in Canada to do these things and that's what I'm planning to do. And this is how much money I have to do it. Or this is how much the group has money to do it, okay? I hope I've given you clarity because uh, that's what my specialty is. Hima, merci, Agareza, Godspeed, good luck. I'm your avid fan in your YouTube channel. Thank you, Hima. We've never met, but uh, of course, uh, I'm here for, to help. That's what I'm here for. Because you know what, folks? IRCC, they're trying to help, but sometimes they're on the wrong side and they create more problems than they solve problems. And sometimes that ambiguity, that vagueness creates more power for them than you. And people are stuck isolated, not knowing what RCC is thinking, how they're processing, what they're planning to do. And that's why we're here to help. Angel, can an SUV, startup visa work permit extension, be applied as paper application within two weeks, processing time versus online? No, you do not do a paper application, avoid it at all cost at, as of you know, this year. Ravneet, no, it's not a deal, Reza, just to share insight. No, <laughs> don't worry, Ravneet. No worry. I mean, it's good for the community to share information. But remember, folks, um, everyone's case is different, okay? And I'm going to give you an insight on startup visa. I've seen startup visa groups who have done nothing and have been approved since 2020 onwards. I'm not talking about pre-2020. And I've seen startup visa groups with $1 million of revenue, legitimate revenue, receiving procedural fairness letters. So here's a big insight or an enlightening moment for you. Startup visa is case by case specific. Your nationality is huge. RCC may not say it or ever announce it, but if you're from those high volume regions, India, Pakistan, Nigeria, Middle East, Iran, Vietnam, Hong Kong, China, be ready. Okay, because they're coming on it. I call it the RCC hit list. Gozi Okolo, for British Columbia PMP, is it strictly based on getting a job in British Columbia or having express entry profile? Job offer, it's employer driven, Gozi. You cannot be selected without in BC PMP as of today without an offer of employment. But you do not need express entry. Express entry is optional. Skilled immigration, express entry, or non express entry. Psalm 91, PGWP holder wants to get her family. She had previous pending a more than a year application for an open spousal work permit and visitor visa for her family. What's the best program to use? So you're a PGWP holder. Oh, shoot. Hold on, folks. You're a PGWP holder, wants to get the family in more than a year. You reapply. You reapply. There's no other program for that. Re reapply under a spousal open work permit, and you m quote the minister's May 28th or 9th uh, announcement that they are fast-tracking families and they're trying to prioritize. Although that's for the family class sponsorship, you still emphasize that. You reapply hardcore. I'm telling you, don't wait for a year. It's a waste of time. That's like being stuck on a street in your car for in traffic and waiting for you. Would you do that? No, you do a U-turn, take another street, or you take another lane, or you take another route. Same route, reapply, forget it. Prashant Rathi, what is the processing time for SUV program? What is the success rate for the same? 65%, if anyone in the world tells you otherwise about startup visa PR application, approval rates being higher than 65%, they are full of whatever you call it, okay? It's 65%. Work permits right now are all over the place, depending on your nationality, okay? Processing times for PR used to be around 30 to 33 months. Now we're seeing faster processing. I'm seeing around one and a half years to two years max, okay? 
Uh, Safa Saleh, Ahmad. Uh, thanks, Reza. Have a great day ahead. Thanks, Safa, for joining us. Bupinder, Ravni, please try to be a good listener. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Bupinder, no worries. He would just... Uh, I think Ravni didn't realize that I go through my little speech before and I update everyone, then I go into the questions. I think he thought, uh, an honest mistake, obviously, um, that he thought I was looking at the questions. But no problem, Ravni. You're a newbie here. I uh, just wanted to make sure Reza got my attention. And I said, no problem, guys. Get, uh, everyone here is on the same page. We want to help each other out. Right, Ravneet? You sound like a good guy. Bupinder, you're here every week. Thank you for that. I apologize for missing yet last week's um, live, I believe, because I was away uh, at the event in Winnipeg. Angel, Reza, can we have a live on significant benefit to Canada? Help us ta tame the beast? Yeah, I like that idea. Note to marketing, significant benefit to Canada. That's amazing, Angel. You're a genius. I've never thought about that. And, and significant benefit, don't get me started on this. I could do have a whole monologue of five hours on this. It's so uh, relative to what your industry is, where you're going. So, and I will give you some interesting ideas. Let's do that. Let's schedule that in July because we already have a pipeline to end June. I love it, Angel. I'm going to give you a prize for that. When you're here in Canada, I'll take you out for lunch, ice cream, or dinner. I love ice cream. I don't know if you guys love ice cream too. Traveling continents with Sean. That's the name of the person answering, asking this question. I did not come up with that. Um, which PMP would pick internationally qualified early child education? Well, you remember a few years ago, uh, Nova Scotia did. Uh, but obviously, BC PMP with a job offer are prioritizing that because that's in the special stream ECE and ECEC assistance. But now we're going to be looking at occupation specific draws as well, right? And maybe Ontario will get on that bandwagon. Maybe the federal government will without the job offers because with job offers, a lot of provinces are supporting it. Without it, we have to see, right? So it could be that this year, the second half of 2023 could be your year Traveling continents with Sean. Shan. Sean or Shan. Psalm uh, 91. Thank you, Reza. Bupinder Reza answers all questions. Of course, Bupinder. All the questions I can and are legal and are not rude. <laughs> I answer all those questions. Ravneet, true Reza. It's a great person. Thank you, Ravneet. Thank you, Bupinder. Thank you, Ravneet. Um, I appreciate that you are joining our session. We want to spread the word. And of course... This is not how we make money, okay? A lot of YouTubers, they come in and they have all these long videos and they, they're like, hold on till the end to, get, to find out the answer to make money. We don't make money off YouTube. We make money helping clients, representing them legally. What we do in this live session, I'm going to clarify everyone, okay? So everyone, this is the moment where you pay attention. When you send emails to us, I don't, personally answer unless you're a client, right? And this is why we have the Thursday live sessions. You can come here, ask as many questions as you want that you can type fast, and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability, not knowing your case or being your legal representative, providing general guidance and Canadian immigration information, okay? So when everyone's sending emails and expecting me to reply, don't expect that, okay? Because the reality is if I get 100 email questions, a week or more, how am I going to answer that? My job is actually working on cases. I'm not a salesperson. I'm not a full-time YouTuber, although some of you may challenge that notion. I actually work on cases. I'm doing research. I'm working with my team, okay? You have questions, come on the live and ask, and I will answer. Your wish is my command, okay? Okay. Um, there you go, folks. Zishan Khalid. Hi, Reza. I've got a PNP from BC for an LMI exam tech program. Nice. Tech occupations. I love it. Medical biometric done in August. Still waiting for PP, uh, the passport request from RCC. Any clue how much long it may take? So I assume you're from outside of Canada. Apply. You've been nominated. You've submitted your application. Federal processing is 18 to 20 months, Zishan. Okay, so you do need to apply for a work permit potentially to come in sooner 
for your employer because the PR will take time, Zishan. Okay? All PMPs without express entry will take time. Gozi Okodo, thanks, Reza, for occupations like nurses, aides, and orderlies, which requires just a post one year secondary education. How do they compare with the high CRS score in the category based on express entry? They will adjust the scores. So Gozi, with the occupation specific draws and express entry, they're gonna have specific CRS scores for each occupation. So they know that a nurse aide um, potentially cannot get the same amount of points as a software engineer with, you know, this, you know, depending on the different occupations or a, or a dentist, for example, right? Or an architect. So they will adjust those, okay? Atulp Skaria, hello, sir. What are the requirements for an employer to get designated on the Atlantic province? I'm currently in Ontario, but my employer is also on the provinces. They're ready to transfer me. Uh, the designation is pretty simple. Also, uh, we do help a lot of our uh, employer clients to become designated. You have to fill out a form, submit it, have a plan in place on how you will help settle your employees that you're nominating, have the specific occupations in place. There's certain training that is required. It's pretty straightforward. It doesn't take a long time, and I would highly suggest your employer do it. If you need help, happy to help out. Tra uh, reach out to our office. Traveling content, thank you. Your energy is amazing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm high on life traveling contents with Sean. Uh, Angel, thanks to Atan Reza for thinking up the suggestion. Hey, thank you, Angel. Not thank me. Thank you, folks, for coming on board and making this a very vibrant community on our YouTube. I'm sorry for the Facebook and Instagram folks who are watching and not can't participate. YouTube is where it's at, folks. Uh, and thank you, Ravneet and Bupinder, because you guys have been making the conversation go round and round and a lot of engagement. Uh, Ravneet, I hope to see you next week. Same with Bupinder. And of course, Angel Traveling Continents with Sean, Gozi, Zishan, uh, Som, um, and of course, you know, everyone else who's joined. Um, Jamie, Still Lost, Amir Shikari, of course, he's here almost every week. <laughs> Ravneet Kaur, Amir Shikari, yeah, just going Fabio, Fabian, Fabian Otero, of course, uh, Abdul Rahman, Pardeep Rathi, uh, all good, all good. And of course, Safa, who can forget Safa? He's a startup visa regular uh, audience member who does a lot of participation and good insight. Um, Zishan Khali says, Reza, I'm from Dubai. I was there last month. Um, and work permit in here itself takes a year. Should I still apply for it? We'll wait for my PR only. Thank you. Zishan, if you're talking about startup visa, depends on how much progress you've had. If you don't have a lot of progress, you want to get more progress, uh, do the work permit. Um, oh, but, oh, you did the BCPMP. I apologize for that. I would say do the work permit and ask the employer to talk to an MP member after the uh, processing time limit has passed to remind IRCC, okay, the embassy in Abu Dhabi. So that's what I suggest to you. Ravneet, yes, I'm a newbie. Thanks very much, Francis Almark. No problem, Ravneet. Great to see you online. Love it. Gozi Okolo, thanks so much, all you do. Thank you. Uh, Ngozi. Angel, what is the provincial incorporation and federal incorporation of a startup business and what is needed by RCC? Is provincial incorporation good enough as far as PR is concerned? Yes, provincial is fine. Federal, you need a 25% di Canadian director. Skip all that and do a provincial. We do have partners that do fast track, very low cost, low cost processing of provincial corporations. It's fast, it's quick, you can do it from overseas. There's no difference in terms of IRCC if you do federal or provincial, but I do suggest not to do sole proprietorship. Pradeep Rathi Reza, can an international student apply for his or her express entry file during studies? Yes, you can have a valid express entry profile as an international student if you meet the eligibility criteria. Let's say you've got overseas experience, right? 
you cannot count your experience for express entry while you're studying and working in Canada. But hey, maybe you've got overseas experience, you've got what it takes, you've got the eligibility, you've got an express entry profile. And if you're invited, what do you do? You apply for a PR, they process it, you maintain your student or study status till your PR is processed. So it's 100% possible. Yes, Pardeep. Sahil Malik, SUV program PR timeline. One and a half to two years if you're applied since late 2021. If you've applied in 2022 as well, if you've applied in 2020 or early 2021, you're looking at a two, two and a half year process at least. Folks, thank you for joining us. We're going to take off. It's 12 noon, Psalm 91. Open spousal work permit and student study permit for PGWP holder who wants to get the family. Is that right? So your PGWP holder, you gotta put your pay stubs in, apply for a spousal open work permit and a visitor visa or study permit if you've got dependent children, okay? Reapply, don't wait for a year, don't be stuck in IRCC traffic. That's what I call it, that's what you gotta do. Bopari blogs, Reza, can an international student apply? Yes, I, I replied that Bopari, just up there. Zishan Khalid, thank you. Thanks everyone, appreciate it. Tune in next Thursday, 11 a.m. North American Eastern Standard Time. I think next week, Thursday, we're talking about startup visa work permits, how to do it. And of course, we're going to take Angel's uh, suggestion. And in July, talk about significant benefit. Okay? Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Bupinder. Thank you, Ravneet. Thank you, uh, Zishan. Adamo is asking Abu Bakr. Hi, Reza. Can you apply for PR with no IELTS? Yes, it depends on the program, Adamu. You gotta f read the fine print. There are programs available without IELTS, but obviously 80% require IELTS, right? But there are programs for PR that potentially can do it without IELTS, yes. Sahil Malik, I have applied 2023, please tell me PR timeline. You're looking at about 18 months to 20 months, Sahil, okay, before they issue a lab, because they're ramping up PR processing for startup visa. It doesn't mean they're ramping up approval rates. Siraj Ahmad, hi Reza, any timeline for SUV? I just explained to Sahil as well. Same thing. If you just apply now, you're looking at around an 18 to 20 month processing timeline. It doesn't mean you're going to be approved. It just means you're going to be processed and a decision will be rendered. Psalm 91, thank you so much. Pardeep, love you so much from India. We love everyone from every part of the world, folks. We literally have clients from all over the world, and I love it. Okay? Thanks so much, Adamu. Thanks so much for everyone. Ah, Manish Adhikari, you came late from Nepal. I am running a business here. What kind of visas can I go for? You can do for C10. You can do for PMP Entrepreneur. You can do... Um, you know, significant benefits, C10, intracompany transfer. There's a lot of programs, all the provincial programs. You can be even a minority investor and doing uh, LMIA or PNP to sponsor you for the company. There's a million ways to do it. Reach out, we'll, our office can do an assessment. Zishan, 18 to 20 months from RCC, including BCPNP. No, Zishan, Zishan, um, yeah. So that's after you have your nomination and you've applied for the federal stage for the PR processing, okay? So you may be looking at 18 to 20 months. It may happen much sooner, but if you're overseas and you have a PNP nomination and applied for PR, you gotta be looking at 18 to 20 months, but that's average, Zishan. People can be waiting longer and some people can be done faster. Apply for a work permit, get your employer to start getting involved with the local MP of the employer after the processing time has passed for your work permit, which probably will be because you're in stuck with the Abu Dhabi embassy, one of the worst IRCC embassies overseas, probably Poland and Abu Dhabi take the, uh, take the cake. Does an online SUV program have faster timelines? Sahil, there is no more paper SUV application. That's that, it's all online and it sucks. You might wait for six months for an actual temporary file number, but take a screenshot of your PR application because you'll need that and your colleagues when you're applying for a startup visa work permit. Next week, I think we're covering startup visa work permit. Zishan, already past 10 months. Uh, Zishan, yeah, I mean, you're, for PNP, you're going to be waiting for a while. Uh, Bupinder, thanks dear for updates. Have a great day. Thank you, Bupinder. Have a great evening. Ravneet as well. Everyone who's joined us, see you next week. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us. You guys are the best. You're all the best, no matter where you're from, where you're immigrating to. And hopefully you can come over and invite me for ice cream. Remember, 
I love ice cream. <laughs> Take care, folks. <laughs>